thank you all uh, so much. I am incredibly honored to be here tonight as the state marks its first official celebration of Harvey Milk Day after the passage of Senator Leno's SB 572. Um, I want to thank you, Stuart, for that introduction. I've got to tell you that uh, standing here uh, watching that play tonight was so incredibly moving. And the play opens with a line, I came out at 14. Well, I didn't come out at 14, but I was 14 when I first heard the story of Harvey Milk. I had just gotten involved in politics. I was walking precincts for the Jobs with Peace Initiative and Walter Mondale's campaign for president. And after a day of walking precincts, I was invited by a family member to watch the documentary, The Life or the Times of, uh, of Harvey Milk. And as a 14-year-old, seeing the story unfold and watching my friend Tom Amiano uh, express all that he expressed in that documentary touched me and moved me in ways that I can't ever express. Um, I would not be here today but for Harvey and but for so many other people who made uh, my election possible. These are clearly challenging times both for our state and for our community. We've made enormous progress here in California, although we certainly have much more work to do. Over the past year and a half, uh, we've made progress nationally. We've seen LGBT people elected to major positions. First, with the election of Anise Parker as mayor of Houston, my election as speaker of the assembly here in California, and then Gordon Fox's election as speaker of the Rhode Island House of Representatives. But what we also know is that these gains are tempered by the fact that we've suffered very disappointing defeats at the ballot box, here first in California and then in Maine, where our rights were stripped away by a vote of the people. Moments such as these tend to remind us of how much further we have to go. But we should take a little bit of time, especially in commemoration of Harvey, to reflect on how far we've come and how we got here. To my mind, the single clearest lesson of the life of Harvey Milk is that the path toward society's full embracement of our community lies in coalition with other groups. In those painful first few days after the passage of Proposition 8, many of us took comfort in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, and I heard people repeat the famous line that the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. That gave us comfort that despite an enormous setback, we would ultimately prevail. I also heard a number of people quoting Dr. King's letter from a Birmingham jail, where he wrote, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. But too many of us forgot the words that followed that line. The full text of the quote is this, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Think about those words for a moment. What Dr. King was saying while sitting in that jail was that the civil rights movement wasn't just about full equality for black men and women, but about full equality for all men and women. His message was that if one group could be minimalized and treated as less than equal, then any group, whether it was racial, political, economic, or cultural, could be treated as less. And that's certainly true today. The diminution of the rights of any group is in fact the diminution of the rights of all groups. And I'm afraid that that is a lesson that many of us need to relearn. We know the demographic divide we face. 
As Stuart mentioned, I'm both the first openly gay person of color elected to state office here in California, but also the first openly gay person elected from a district that voted against us uh, both in 2000 with respect to Prop 22 and then again last year with respect to Prop 8. That divide is not going to go away simply because we knock on a few doors or phone bank, although that work is crucial and it needs to happen if we're going to win repeal of Prop 8. But we need to put those efforts into perspective. A door knock or a phone call gets us a contact, but it doesn't necessarily get us a convert. To make ourselves and our struggle relevant, we must make ourselves relevant in the lives of those we're trying to convince to stand with us. Let me give you an example. Californians up and down our state are appalled by what's going on right now in Arizona. It's debasing. It's dehumanizing. It's degrading. It's humiliating. And it has the effect of treating a whole class of people in Arizona as something less than full and equal citizens of this country. Our community knows intimately how painful it is to be treated that way. That law isn't an LGBT issue per se, but the attitude that makes it permissible to treat Latinos in Arizona as second-class citizens is the same attitude that allows the state of California to treat us as second-class citizens. We must, we must stand up vigorously and vocally against this law. We must do this because it's the right thing to do for our community, as well as it being the right thing to do for the Latino community in Arizona. Many of the men and women who will fall victim to this law will be our brothers and sisters, and we must stand with them. That is the way forward. Through the difficult and arduous process of building real bridges and not just relationships of convenience. Harvey Milk himself taught us this example. The Coors boycott is one of the seminal moments in our community's history. Because for the first time, with the labor community, we had a genuine partner in our struggle for acceptance and equality. What were those employees at Coors fighting for? dignity and respect from their employer, just as we were fighting for dignity and respect from the broader community. Together, the labor community and the LGBT community created an enduring partnership that lasts to this day. It's very telling that Harvey himself had few allies amongst the self-identified leaders of the LGBT community in San Francisco when he first set about to change the course of our movement's history. <coughs> Labor was the first community to stand with Harvey because they recognized the strength of communities coming together and they appreciated his genuine partnership with them. Harvey stood with Labor not simply because they were strong allies, but because of the commonality of both groups struggling for respect and dignity of which they were being deprived. The legacy of that early partnership can still be felt today. In most states in this country, if you are gay, if you are lesbian, if you are transgendered, you can be fired for that reason and nothing else. In too many states, the only protection that LGBT employees have from discrimination in employment comes from a union contract. Just as we must stand with the Latino community in fighting the Arizona law, we must continue to stand in solidarity with labor. We need to join their, join their fight for the Employee Free Choice Act, just as they continue. <laughs> just as they continue to stand with us in our fight for the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. We have so many opportunities to build stronger and more enduring coalitions. From our brothers and sisters in Arizona, fighting a debasing law to our brothers and sisters in California, fighting the uh, horrific disparity in HIV and AIDS rates amongst blacks and Latinos. 
We need to empower them in their work so that they can and will empower us in ours. This is a poignant moment for our community. We are honoring a man who made so much possible for us. We must reflect on the lessons of his life and use that reflection to guide us forward in the months and years ahead. <coughs> Let me close by saying this. I grew up in a California where almost no Latinos had served in state office. And the thought of a gay man in office was unfathomable. unfathomable. Yet today I stand before you as Speaker of the State Assembly. We know that the arc of history is long and that it does in fact bend towards justice. But the bending of that arc is our collective responsibility because there will always be those who resist. Our job is to ensure that we keep that arc bending towards justice. And we are vastly stronger in that effort when we have allies by our sides. There will be a day very soon when we are all fully woven into the American garment of destiny. But there is much hard work that we have to do before we get there. So let's get to work. Thank you.